um, prepare uh, the questions from last week's session because we were not able to keep up uh, all the questions. Um, so, um, as you know, we are now talking, we, we were discussing about the uh, taking refuge. Oh yeah. And uh, in order to have refuge, we, refuge, we have to have uh, faith uh, and uh, devotion. Um, so when we talk about faith, usually there is the, I, I don't know, in, 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 in most of our, um, uh, in the Eastern uh, culture, when we talk about faith, we do not, uh, there isn't that much of a problem. But in the West, when you talk about faith, faith usually talks, faith usually uh, relates to something that is uh, believed um, um, without searching or without looking for any reasons, just uh, have, have faith. Having faith uh, means something to, um, to, to dive into something without proper research or proper analysis. So if you uh, think of faith in this um, setting, then it is, uh, it, this is not the faith that we are referring to. In the Buddha Dharma, in, in Buddhism, when we talk about faith, we are not talking, we are not talking, we are not referring to a kind of faith or a, uh, that is, uh, when we say faith in the Buddha Dharma, we are not referring to uh, kind of a blind trust. So having faith is believing in something, of course, but that belief comes not out of uh, uh, sheer uh, darkness. <clears throat> you believe in something because you have no other alternative. That is not the case. case. So you believe in something uh, after analyzing, uh, after an analyzing and after um, a lot of research, you find that this is the Thing that works, and because of that, you have faith in it. You have trust in that. You entrust your practices into it, and then you have faith in them. So, um, the faith, as we understand in Buddha Dharma, is something that comes uh, from analysis and from research, and not, not from sheer um, inability or. or the the sheer inability to and, and the, the, out of, out, without um, it does it does not come out of no choice. So out of many choices, you look for you 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 do research and you you analyze all the different options, and then you find this is the perfect um, uh, practice or path, and then then you have faith. So once you find, <clears throat> once you uh, you look for uh, all the reasonings, and once you find um, suitable um, reasoning and logic to back up um, having faith or uh, to to believe in or to practice that particular um, tradition, then you have faith in it. So it is like, uh, so basically, having faith means believing in something that is um, um, that has gone through trial and test. So, so when we talk about faith, do not confuse it, it with something that we have to believe uh, blind, uh, blindfoldedly without any research, just because it is faith, just because it is Dharma, just because it's religion, you cannot question anything. Um, and it should be believed and even even asking questions about the Buddha, the Dharma, or Sangha, or anything, uh, is sacrilegious, right? So if you ask questions about anything, any questions or any doubt you have, then that is against the Dharma. So never think like that. So uh, having faith is analyzing and testing first, and after going through the trials and error, after going through the tests, then when you have uh, suitable reasons to back up your belief in a certain system or practice, then you have uh, you, you devote yourself to it. That is what faith means in Buddhist practices. Okay, so so in that in in in, in that case, uh, having faith becomes very important in order to have refuge, take refuge 
in uh, the triple gem. Uh, <clears throat> so we talk about faith uh, last couple of days. So having faith is the basis on of having that um, taking refuge because uh, taking refuge means to uh, place yourself in under under the hands of someone or something. Uh, the term refuge is uh, to 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 seek uh, for to to seek sanctuary in something or someone. So you are asking for help. You are asking someone to help you. You are asking someone to take care of you. Um, or basically, in this sense, you are asking you are you are um, um, asking someone to um, take you out of samsara, take you out of this cyclic existence of infinite suffering. So, uh, in that sense, to take refuge in some to take refuge uh, to take refuge in something or someone. In this case, the triple gem. You need uh, to have have faith in the triple gem. Basically, meaning. Having faith, as we understand now, is to believe, uh, to have belief, to have strong belief and strong, um, infallible trust in the triple gem, infallible trust. So why you would, why should you trust uh, the triple gem? Because if you want to entrust your life into the practice, if you want to spend, because basically when we say, uh, you know, we are practicing the Dharma. <clears throat> if you practice the Dharma half-heartedly, Without, you know, you're not so sure if this will work or not, but you, uh, you are doing the practice because everyone else does the practice. In that sense, you are not giving your 100% into the practice. So even if you practice for your whole life, you, you may, I mean, if, even if you believe yourself to be practicing for one, your whole life, uh, if you just give your, if you don't give your 100%, if you don't have, if you don't really believe in the practice, in the in in the Dharma, then having uh, doing it just because everyone else does uh, does not make much progress in your practice. In in in, and then you wonder why I have been practicing for so many years, and then there is no result at all, right? So there are many who practice for twenty something years, and then they say, "Oh, I've been practicing for so many years, but in my life." Uh, the Dharma practice did not help that much. Uh, reading about uh, the Lamrim text or reading about uh, the uh, the Dharma text did not help much. What usually helped me is, you know, pr praying to this or that, maybe like Zambala or some small uh, the, um, the the uh, the protectors uh, by offering the black tea offer, making the black tea offerings and praying to the protectors. Playing to praying to the worldly gods, they are so good. They answer all my questions. They, uh, you know, they answer all my prayers. They answer all my questions. Uh, when it comes to the Buddha Dharma Dharma practice, of course, they say they they do say it's very extensive and very um, good practice. But you know, for me, there is no not much of a, a difference. It doesn't make any. And doesn't make much of a sense to me. Um, so, so there are many who say that, and uh, um, uh, saddeningly, unfortunately, uh, that is because you are not, you do not have a proper faith in the Dharma. So you may think that you have faith, but you actually do not have a proper faith. If you have proper faith in the Dharma, then you will uh, give yourself one hundred percent into the Dharma. So giving yourself one hundred percent into the Dharma does not mean you give all your money or your you give all your possessions and life saving to a monastery or a you know a teacher or something. We are not talking in that that is that is what it, that that is not what it means. So giving yourself to the Dharma is to have uh, one hundred percent faith in the Dharma. That Dharma is the only way out of samsara. So if you um, and in order to have a strong belief in Dharma, then again, just like we uh, covered like a couple months before, in order to have strong uh, sense of belief in Dharma, you have to have strong sense of belief in the law of causality or karma. So if you if you want to practice Dharma, if you want to practice Dharma properly, you need to have faith in the Dharma properly. If you have if you in order to have proper faith in the Dharma, you need to have proper faith in karma, uh, uh, you know, the law of causality, karma. So if you do not believe in karma that much, if you have a very shaky understanding or belief 
in karma, then you will also have a shaky belief or uh, or faith in the dharma too. And if you have a shaky belief, uh, shaky, you know, not very strong, then uh, your practices will also become shaky. So if you, so the foundation, the faith is the foundation. If you have a strong faith in the dharma, if you believe, if you uh, trust yourself into the Buddha dharma, uh one hundred percent. If you give yourself in all the way, then <clears throat> uh, all the following practices will become so much more effective. Uh, whether it's your um, mundo practices, or whether it's your retreats, or whether it's your like uh, normal, ordinary meditations, or any other, any kind of practices, if you start that with the proper faith, strong faith in the triple gem or in your guru, then all other things will follow. But if you do not do that, then other things will be very difficult to come. So if you remember last week's uh, last week's teaching, last week's class, we talk about how the Indians uh, joke uh, at the Tibetan uh, Tibetan Tibetan students, now masters, but at that, that time students of, uh, you know, there were great masters from Tibet uh, who go, went to India to study. And then the Indian masters, they mock at them. They, you know, uh, mock, uh, make fun of them by saying uh, the Indian, the Tibetans try everything and get nothing done. Indians try one thing and get everything done. So it's another way of saying that, uh, okay, so the exact word, exact literal wording is that Tibetans try 100 deities and get uh, not, does not get even one deity done or uh, we're not able to attain even one deity, but the Indians uh, practice one one deity properly and get 100 deities done. So in simple terms, you know, doing one thing properly and getting everything else done um, and uh, doing everything else improperly and not getting, not getting even one thing done. Mm. So that is the case. So this one thing, uh, that is the, um, the, uh, the proper faith, proper faith. Uh, proper faith in the Dharma, proper faith in the uh, Buddha Dharma and Sangha Triple Gem. And additionally, in the Tibetan uh, practice, we add the Guru. And that the reason behind that is uh, in the Tibetan Buddhism is generally uh, tantric, uh, it has the, um, within the Tibetan Buddhism, uh, the Tibetan, Buddh Tibetan Buddhist, uh, we practice uh, Tantrayana as well. So in Tantrayana, the guru devotion or guru yoga is essential. That's the key. So therefore, we add to the guru. So like when we prostrate, we in in other traditions it's just uh, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. But in the Tibetan tradition, we have we add one more with the guru on the top of the head and the Buddha on the forehead and the Dharma on the throat and the Sangha at the heart. So we have like uh, one additional uh, um, sort of a. Uh, uh, form um, one additional object of refuge, um, but it does not contradict with the Buddha's teaching in the sense that when you put, uh, you know, Buddha said only three, uh, three jewels, right? Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. <clears throat> and uh, in the Tibetan tradition, we have the fourth one, which is the Guru, uh, but it does not contradict with the Buddha's teaching because the Guru that you uh, prost uh, prost prostrate or have worship or have faith, yeah. Uh, the guru, which you put on your forehead, uh, on on your head, is also none other than the Buddha. So your guru, you have to look at your guru. You have to be able to see your guru as a Buddha. Um, does not necessarily mean that all the gurus uh, are Buddha in reality. So reality. So this may sound a little bit uh, contradictory, but I will explain. So uh, when we talk about uh, once we once we uh, get a proper guru, once we get a proper teaching, once we get a proper dharma, once we get a proper, you know, the triple gem and all the practices are sorted out, uh, then um, we, you know, visualize the guru as the Buddha. And whether the guru is actually a Buddha or not does not really matter. So here, in this case, the reality does not matter. So this is where your imagination or your visualizations becomes more powerful than actual reality or the outside reality. So in this case, the in internal reality becomes more important, plays a 
more important role than the outside world. So normally, uh, you know, when we talk about truth or not truth or reality or not reality, we always think of an outside world. What we think within our mind, we think that is just imaginary. So what's happening in the outside world, that is the reality, right? So it, it uh, so lo looking at it from a materialistic point of view, that is the truth. Uh, outside world is reality, inside world is just imaginary. That is a materialistic, uh, materialistic um, <clears throat> perspective. But if you look at it from a spiritualistic uh, perspective, from a spiritual point of view, then uh, it does not necessarily have to be uh, that that uh, th true that everything that is outside is real and everything that is inside is unreal. That that does not have to stand uh, true. Um, <clears throat> reality can be outside as well as inside internal reality and external reality so both can be a reality so um <clears throat> there are many times you know just a small example would be when your mood is good when you are in a good mood when you are you know in a in a in a good uh, good light um, then everything that happens around you seems to be nice even something you know normally we do that a lot when uh, when we are small if our parents or in the monastery when our teachers have a very a bad temper um so we always try to look at the teacher's mood uh how whether they're angry or not and uh, so if we made a small mistake we try to hide them and then when the teacher is in a good mood then we tell them that we made a mistake and then they just say okay okay that's fine that's fine right uh, like we break a glass or we break something in the house or some, something like some small mistake that we do. So we try to hide them for until our teacher is in a good mood. And then we tell them that. So basically when we tell them uh, the, 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 the mistakes that we make when their mood is uh, much lighter, then they take it in a more lightly way. <clears throat> so basically uh, the reality is that we broke uh, the, the glass. We made a mistake. But when we uh, share that, when the air, when when the mood is lighter, when the internal reality is much lighter, much more, um, uh, uh, it, it, uh, much much more uh, smooth, then the person who takes that information, that information, uh, um, the mistake that we make, which is an is an external thing, uh, does not affect the person that much. So basically. <clears throat> Uh, my point is that there are two types of reality. There's external reality and internal reality. Just because you do not... Um, so basically uh, visualizing your guru as the Buddha. So when you visualize your guru as the Buddha, so guru becomes a Buddha. And so for that reason, guru is the uh, Buddha Dharma Sangha. So in that sense, guru is part of the Buddha. So there, so it does not contradict. Even though we say guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, it does not contradict with the... Um, the core teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, because we visualize the Guru himself as the Buddha. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, just as I mentioned, when we talk about when we uh, the, the Indians are uh, mocking the Tibetans by saying the Tibetans practice uh, hundred deities and accumulate on uh, a, a accomplish only one. Uh, in that sense, they are referring to. Vajrayana tantric practices, and they say uh, that they're, they're referring that uh, you know the Tibetans are not able to uh, grasp the, um, the the essence of Vajrayana practice, which is guru devotion, uh, in and, and that that is in the Vajrayana uh, sense. And here, when we talk about the uh, the basic uh, the Buddha Dharma or the the general Buddha Dharma, not the uh, uh, not, not the Vajrayana Buddha Dharma. The key here is to have proper refuge, proper faith, sorry, proper faith. So once you have, if you do not have faith, just like the Indians making joke, mocking at the, the Tibetans, like, you know, we, we, we try our hands at 100 deities and accomplish none. Similarly, if you do not have a proper faith, uh, faith is the one thing that is most important. So if you do not have proper faith, then anything else that you try your hands at, uh, you will have some minor achievements uh, you will be able to cross some milestones um, to a certain degree and then there will be no more progress after that because you do not have a very strong uh, foundation so that foundation 
that we are talking, the, the foundation that we are referring to in, uh, in the uh, basic uh, Buddha Dharma is faith. Oh yeah, the, now uh, we will go to the books. Uh, it's uh, page 176, uh, <clears throat> if you have the book in English. So, uh, so in order now, now to take refuge, first the most important, the, the, um, um, in order to have refuge, you need to have a proper motivation. So why are you taking the refuge, right? So there are three types of motivation, and uh, these motivations are uh, um, for three types of uh, human uh, sentient beings, three types of beings, individuals. So the uh, the the lesser beings or the lesser individuals sometimes in <clears throat> so the lesser lesser individual lesser beings middling beings and the great beings uh so this is a term used in the uh the Dzogchen, uh term terminology in the um um the gilupa tradition we usually use the term uh the the persons or individuals of um uh, small capacity middle capacity and great capacity so anyway so it's the basically the same thing <clears throat> just a different terminology okay so here so the lesser beings the middle beings uh, so there are three types of being um the middle the the the, the lower the middle and the uh the the, the greater uh, so so the lesser beings are those who are really um who are really fed up with the samsaric experiences, samsaric experiences, whether you are in the, uh, especially the, uh, the, 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 um, the sufferings in the, um, in, in the lower realms, in the three, three lower realms, you are really fed up with the, um, the, the suffering in the three lower realms of uh, Prata, the hungry ghost, the animal realm, and uh, the, uh, the hell realms. So those who are really fed up with, uh, so you have this idea that you are, as long as you are in samsara, you may be living a good life this this time, but then once you uh, die, and once you once you pass away from this life, then you may be born in the lower realms, and then your suffering continues. Um, so then you may again come back to uh, the the human realm, but then you may go back to the hell realm, and so it never. Uh, it never uh, uh, stops. So this that this is that infinite um, cycle of uh, suffering goes on and on. So you are fed up with that. You really want to. Um, oh yeah, excuse me. So so the, the 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 lower the lesser beings are not fed up with samsara. They are just fed up with the uh, the the lower part of the samsara, which means the the hell realms. The hell realms, the hungry ghost realms, and the uh, animal realms. So when you are really fed up, you are really scared. Of, basically, you are really scared of dying and being born in the lower realm as a hungry ghost, as a spirit, as a hell, uh, as an animal like that. And so because of that fear, you want to practice the Dharma. You take refuge in the Buddha. So you're not concerned about samsaric world in general. You're just concerned about not being born in the uh, the lower realm. So th out of that fear, if you take refuge, that, that refuge is called the refuge of the lower individuals or the lesser individuals. So that is the uh, lesser individual or the low indi <clears throat> individual with individuals with the lower capacity uh, here referred to as the lesser beings. Um, so you are just thinking about getting out of um, the not being born in the hell realm or the you know next life so that is the lesser beings then then there is a type of person who knows who understand that uh even if you escape from the lower realms one time this is not ultimate so you escape from lower realms so next life you're not uh, you practice the dharma in order to escape from uh the being born in the hell or in the animal kingdom or in the hungry ghost realm uh and then you will be born in a human being uh, next life or maybe in a god realm but what will you do uh, if you do not understand the dharma properly if you do not practice then you will be once you're uh the um 
the, the, uh, so the merit, the merit that you have accumulated uh, from your past lives are all <clears throat> uh, uh, completed, uh, then you will be again born. Uh, you have no other choice but to be born in the hell realm. So basically, when all your uh, meritorial credits end up, then there is no other options but to be born in the hell realms once again. Uh, so for that reason, samsara. I think if you remember last week's teaching, I talk about you know we talk about going uh, you know the uh, for for a certain amount of time you climb up until from six from six o'clock to twelve o'clock you go up 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 and then from twelve twelve o'clock then until six o'clock clock again you keep coming down just like a clock so samsara is just like a, a wall clock and so there is like six hours of going up and six hours of going down so as long as you are in samsara sometimes it's up sometimes it's down but you are constantly uh you are constantly disturbed or perturbed uh by that suffering so there is a slight amount of non-suffering time and that non-suffering time is referred to in samsara as happiness so from, so from the uh, perspective of the sublime beings, from the perspective of the noble, noble ones, there is no real happiness or joy in samsara. So when the people in samsara are not uh, suffering, what we call the, the three types of suffering, the suffering of suffering, suffering of change like that. So when the people in samsara are not going through uh, <clears throat> agonizing suffering or suffering of suffering really painful types of suffering then we think that we are uh in a joyful uh state but we are actually just it's like taking a break uh from a very painful uh moment very painful experience so it's not that you're actually experiencing joy you're just taking a break from that painful experience so uh, um so those who understand that that uh, the six hours up is nothing, but it's a preparation for going six hours down, like a clock, uh, like a wall clock. So six hours up, six hours down. So like that, when our life seems to go up, it's just a preparation for us to go down, like a roller coaster maybe, right? So it's always going round and round like that. So when those who are aware of that and who just wants to not only escape the lower realms, but escape samsara, uh, um, samsara as whole just to escape samsara just to get out of samsara in order to get out of samsara you take refuge in the buddha in the dharma in the sangha that is called the person uh with the, the middle capacity the medium capacity or here referred to as the middling beings you see that suffering in hell realm and the lower realm is miserable and you want to escape that that's called the lesser beings and then you understand that even though you are escape from the hell realms and you come to the uh, from escape from the lower realms and you come to the uh, heavenly realms or the human realms uh, but still you know you, uh, when your meritorial credits uh, end up then you will be reborn in the hell realm because of your negative karma and you want to escape <clears throat> samsara at all uh, samsara as a whole uh, you want to seek out nirvana and that is called the uh, the middling beings or the um, persons or individuals of middle uh, medium capacity, and then you understand that it is not just you, but uh, your parents, your brothers and sisters, uh, your um, you know loved ones, and everybody, everyone, whether they are human beings or non-human beings, every other beings are actually part of samsara and as long as they are in samsara there may be small uh, some some uh, there there may be some time for them to uh, let's say that there are some upheavals there are some time for uh, you know pause or break uh, from the painful experiences but once uh, when when that uh, um, that uh, time is up then they will go back to uh, suffer basically every other beings that we witness are in samsara and they're all suffering and so for that reason uh <clears throat> wishing to be free from samsara myself to become to be free to 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 seek, to seek nirvana 
for myself is not sufficient. I need to seek out something more than nirvana so that I can get every, every other sentient being out of samsara as well. I can show the way I can lead every other sentient beings out of samsara. Uh, because as long as they're in samsara, uh, there will be suffering. Even though they do not suffer for a certain period of time, it's just a pause, it's just a break. And then they will go back to suffering. So for that reason, in order to take every sentient being out of samsara, I need to seek out something more than just nirvana. Uh, just out of samsara is not enough. And so for that reason, I need to take complete enlightenment. I need to achieve attain complete enlightenment or Buddhahood. And so for becoming a Buddha, so for transforming myself, from changing myself from this person, uh, this person meaning an ordinary person with all the pains and the misery and uh, the, the ego and anger, all the three, the three poisons or the five poisons, everything inside from that to someone uh, purified, someone who has who is um, purified all the negativities, who has eliminated all the negative uh, afflictive emotions. So in order to change that, uh, in order to become a Buddha, so basically very simple words, to, to transform myself <clears throat> from this incomplete and imperfect state to the complete and perfect statehood of Buddha, I take refuge in the triple gem that is called the uh, the refuge of the greater beings uh, or the uh, the persons individuals with the greater capacity and that is also known as the Mahayana uh, uh, refuge. So if someone has that kind of view, someone has that kind of understanding or attitude, then that person is a real Mahayana practitioner. So it doesn't matter whether they belong to uh, Theravada tradition or they they belong to any. Uh, country or background doesn't matter as long as you have that kind of mental attitude then you are a Mahayana practitioner no matter what oh yeah so this concludes today's class uh, session so i'll open up for questions and uh, next week we will talk about how to take refuge itself uh <clears throat> we'll talk about the refuge field or the merit field as we call it in the uh in the Gilupa tradition so the refuge or the merit field uh, how to visualize and what to visualize everything. So we will talk about this next week. Now questions, please. Um, we have two questions. Yes, um, please. I'll read the first one. Um, uh, prostrate to Mimichela. Uh, when it comes to having strong faith in the Dharma, uh, mm. which is more important? For example, having um, a strong faith in oneself and following the Buddha's teachings or having strong faith in one's guru's blessing or guru devotion? Thank you, Vimichi. Yeah, so that's a very good question. And there's a story related to that question uh, from Mineral Rabbi in Marpa's time. Uh, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe some of you may remember. I may have told this story once uh, sometime back. So the story is that, uh, so this is like after Marba, Marpa, Marpa agreed to teach uh, Mineral Rabbi, um, the, you know, he didn't teach for a very long time, right? So you know the whole story. So uh, in the end, Marpa taught Mineral Rabbi a lot, of, gave a lot of a teaching instruction and all that. So in the end, around like before Milarepa went to the to the mountains to practice what his teacher taught. <clears throat> um, I yeah, I think much much later, I think he went up to the mountains and he was practicing or something. So at that one time, he has a vision of his guru, uh, the Marpa. So basically, Milarepa sees Marpa, and uh, then, uh, and at the same time. Um, Okay, so I'm not very sure about the timing. Okay, so it's after much after Marpa gave the teaching to Milarepa. Either he went to the mountains or it's in Marpa's uh, hermit, uh, Marpa's uh, place. I don't remember exactly. So, in any case, it's much later part of Milarepa and Marpa's relationship. So, they teach each uh, Marpa, teach Mar Milarepa, and all that. So, in the very end, <clears throat> what happened was uh, 
Milarepa was seized Marpa, right? Seized Marpa. And then, um, and at the same time, uh, you know, Marpa teach something and then Marpa, from Marpa's heart comes out uh, the 10,000, 1,000 Buddhas of this era, this eon. <clears throat> so all the Buddhas of this eon, all the, uh, the, the thousand Buddhas of this eon were on one side. And on the other side, there is uh, Marpa. And uh, then, then Marpa asked Milarepa one question is, uh, so would you prostrate to the 1,000 Buddhas or would you uh, prostrate to this one guru? And Milarepa thought for a second, and he decided that uh, my guru is always with me. Uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's there with me all the time. And but the one thousand Buddha, that is not uh, <clears throat> ordinary sight. You cannot see the thousand Buddhas every day. So for that reason, I will prostrate to the Buddha first. And he decided that, and he uh, tried to prostrate to the Buddhas on the other on the other side. And when he decided, uh, when he prostrated to the Buddhas, then uh marpa said uh, so the tibetan text is like this lama maybe corona sangye chai me so basically translate as before uh before the guru there isn't even something called the buddhas so the the term the term the name the title of buddha uh, but before the gurus came even the title of a buddha is not non existent so this is what he said. Lama maybe Konrena Sangye Chai Miyame. And he said that, and all the Buddhas, the 10,000 uh, 1, 1, Buddhas that is on the other side, actually uh, merged, submerged into the heart of his guru, uh, Marpa Lodzawa, Marpa. And, uh, and then, uh, th then that's a very big lesson for Mar uh, Milarepa. So he understood that all the blessings and all the uh, the uh, all the uh, the uh, attainments you know has to come through the guru and as i said earlier whether the guru is a buddha or not being a buddha is not relevant here uh in the external world whether the guru is in the outside world whether the guru whether your guru is a buddha or not does not matter in the inside world in your own practice in your personal individual practice you uh must be able to see your guru as the buddha so when you see yourself your your your, your teacher as the guru, uh, your guru as the buddha then there is no different difference differentiation between uh whether should i practice the guru whether or should i practice with the buddha because the buddha the guru is the buddha in human form and uh, without guru there is no buddha <clears throat> so this is uh um, since we are all practicing, uh, supposedly practicing Vajrayana or, you know, Tantric Buddhism, so this is something that I'm referring to. If you are not a, you know, uh, Vajrayana practitioner, the answer may be a little bit different. Uh, but in any case, um, the the thing is uh, that you must, the Guru is uh, the Buddha in human form. So there, for that reason, there is no differentiation between all this is the guru and that is the Buddha. Of course, there are different titles, right? You know, the child calls uh, one person, the, 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 the child will say, Papa, right? And the wife will say, my husband. Uh, the father will say, my son. And the brother will say, my brother. It's just basically the same person, but will be uh, referred in different terms by different people. <clears throat> just like that, the Buddha, uh, the, the guru is the Buddha in human form for me, right? Right. Um, just like the, the father of a child, from a child's pers perspective, for the child, this is the father, not the son. But for the uh, father's father, he, that father is the, 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 the child, not the, not the father. And for the wife, that father is not a father, but the uh, husband. So like that, from individual perspective. So there is the, the reality that is experienced by all of us together. And then there is a reality experienced by myself. So in that sense, uh, so seeing when, when there is no differentiation between Buddha and the guru, then you cannot say, oh, uh, you know, so that, that is one, one thing. And uh, so maybe the question arises in the sense that you have a trouble with your guru you have a fight with your guru you know like many many cases where you are unable to develop 
So this is a, anyway, I try to tell people that, you know, in order to, be, before before you take someone as your guru, analyze, you know, test, be, be sure that this is the guru you want to take, right? This is, and once you take the guru, don't just, you know, don't be like a kid, take your guru and then, you know, throw it away and then, you know, uh, anyway. So, um, in any case, there are many cases in, in the, there are many cases where you take a guru and then you have a very um, kind of a very um, um, bad uh, connection or relationship with the guru. Uh, either the guru, uh, may, maybe it's the guru's fault, maybe it's your fault. In any case, you have a very bad relationship with the guru. So in those cases, the best thing is to distance yourself with the guru, right? And in those cases, if you are not able to take refuge or if you are not able to visualize the whenever you think of the guru you have a very bad memories you are not able to visualize and then in this case you can just think of the buddha buddha shakyamuni because buddha shakyamuni is not in human form uh, i mean he was in human form but since we do not meet him at all all the things that we heard about buddha shakyamuni was good things so we have a more <clears throat> easier way of taking refuge in the buddha shakyamuni Whereas with the guru, we have, we, we interacted, we meet on a day-to-day -day basis, or we're able to see. So we see the good side as well as the bad side. So for us ordinary beings, it's more difficult to take, uh, you know, see our guru as a Buddha, rather than seeing Shakyamuni as a uh, Siddhartha Gautama as a Buddha. For Siddhartha Gautama, the only, all the things that we've heard as good things. So it's easier for us to visualize Siddhartha Gautama as a Buddha. But when it comes to our guru, we have seen both sides. So it's very difficult for us to see him as a Buddha. So if you have such problem, such uh, if you have a toxic uh, history with your guru, <clears throat> then distance, do not uh, visualize your guru. Instead, just focus on Buddha Shakyamuni himself. So this is the same advice I would give to a non-Vajrayana Buddhist practitioner. So if you are non-Vajrayana Buddhist practitioner, then the, uh, the, the guru is not, you do not have to visualize on the guru. You visualize on Buddha Shakyamuni or the Buddha himself. That is sufficient. Yeah. Next, please. Hey, um, Rumichi, I think you answered the question uh, already. Uh, question two, I think uh, you already answered both. Um, okay. But it's just the follow-up question yeah. uh, with the question one is that um, e even though one has a strong faith in the guru and good mm -hmm. relationship with the with the guru um, should one realize on the guru to gain enlightenment or liberation mm -hmm. um, to become a buddha or should one relies on oneself practice mm -hmm. to gain that realization and yeah. reach the level of enlightenment, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think that is where I would like to be. Um... Sure. <clears throat> um, so, uh, yeah, again, a very good question. So, uh, initially, you will have to rely on the guru more than yourself. Of course, when we say you rely on the guru, it does not mean the guru will do everything for you. If you just uh, have faith, you have to do your practices, right? <clears throat> But as uh, time progresses, then you will find that, uh, that, you know, when you are capable, when you, it's like riding a bicycle or uh, riding, you know, you, when you, in the, in the beginning, you have, you, you have to rely on someone to uh, take, uh, you know, ride a bicycle for, with you. Of course, you have to pedal the cycle yourself, uh, but then someone will support you, you know, uh, you know, hold you from falling down like that. And then, then after some time, you will know that, uh, you know, you do not, you do not require or rely on that person anymore, even though that person was the one who sort of like, you know, brought you to learn how to ride the bicycle. And from then onwards, uh, you can ride on yourself, you can, you can ride by yourself. Uh, so you do not, you do no longer require another person to uh, uh, support you from falling down. Uh, so until then, you really have to rely on the uh, on the other person. So, like that, uh, initially you really have to rely on the guru. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> um, so in we say uh, in 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 the practice we usually say thangbo pejalatte nieba lamalatte subar rangisemlatte or rangalatte. So basically it means uh, 
initially rely on the textbook, right? And then rely on the guru, and then rely on yourself or your mind, your heart. Um, so, so maybe riding a bicycle is too simple. <laughs> so let's say in in in, in ordinary, uh, let's say mathematics, right? Your teacher. Initially, you have to rely on your mathematic teacher, but that teacher cannot teach just whatever he thinks of uh, he or she wants to teach. He has to everything has to go through or like uh, has to fall right through the uh, the structure of mathematics so when when that person is trying to teach you mathematics that person has to teach what is a part of mathematics does cannot do something that is out of the context um so like that so first rely on the text first rely on the text of the mathematics first rely on the text of uh the buddha dhamma which is you are which you are practicing you are being taught by your teacher, but the teacher cannot teach just whatever he wants to teach. He has to go through some general prescription of the text. And then as, as you progress further and further, then <clears throat> the Buddha Dharma is also considered like an instruction. So the instruction manual, if you have, if you have a broken piece, uh, when you buy a piece of, uh, when, when you buy electronic things, they usually have the uh, manual instruction, instruction manual or whatever that. So in the instruction manual, they have different kind of uh, troubleshooting, right? Different kind of uh, instructions, like do this, this, and that. You do not have to do all of that, okay? You just have to, if your, let's say your uh, headphone is not uh, not charging properly, properly, then you just have to sort out the charging problem. You do not have to sort out any other problem. So you just look at the instruction where it says how to charge properly. So similarly, <clears throat> first you rely on the whole text and then your teacher will sort of uh, customize your practice for yourself. And then you know, okay, this is my practice. You do not need all the practices later part, okay? Not in the beginning. In the beginning, you have to be introduced to the whole set. And then the teacher will say, okay, you need this and this and this practice. That is good for you, right? The customization happens. So that is where you rely on the teacher more than the text itself, because the teacher will tell you now do this and this. You do not need the whole text. And whatever there may be, you know, more extensive texts, uh, texts, there may be more, let's say, higher practices and all this, but doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't, is not necessary for you. Your teacher knows you. It's like a tailor made, tailor made coat, tailor made suit. So he actually customizes the best thing for you. He customizes your diet according to your spiritual diet, dietary preferences and dietary requirements. He will customize it for you. So that is where you rely on the teacher. And then after a certain time, you will be, so, you know, you will become so much independent. You no longer require either the text or the teacher uh, to rely upon. You will be able to know, see, do things, everything on your own. And then, yeah, so that is what we are looking for, forward to. So, so when we rely on ourselves to practice our progress forward, uh, then we no longer need to rely on the teacher anymore. <clears throat> uh, of course, we are still grateful to our teacher for showing the path, but we no longer require uh, their guidance at every, um, at, 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 at every nook and corner. Mm. So you answer, to answer to your question, basically, yes, rely on the guru, but walk yourself, walk by yourself, walk on yourself. We have one more question. Thank you, Pramiche. Um, huh? No more questions, Pramiche. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, okay, then uh, conclude. <clears throat> Dedication, please. Kewandi ye nyurgun ba lama sangye ndrugyura nendo wa chikyam ma liyam ba kegye sala ke ba shu chanjo senjo nim ma yeam ba namangye yo jikye ba nyam ba nyam ba kune